What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Married to Reality. I'm your co-host, John, here with my wife and co-host. She summed up this episode in four words. These people are crazy. It's the (laughs) one and only accurate Teresa. (laughs) Hello, everyone. How's everyone doing? Guys, new season, who this? (laughs) This thing is just wild. How do they do that? How does TLC does that? Every single new season is wilder than the other. And when we think like we've seen it all, they come up with something wilder. Yeah. I mean, I understand pushing the limits and and sometimes you push it too far. Shout out to the five part tell all. Uh, (laughs) No limits. Something should have limits. (laughs) But... This, when I originally went through the cast and was talking about the backstories weeks ago, I was like, I don't know. This seems like we've jumped the shark. Like now we're just trying to to be outrageous to be outrageous, we've right? We've jumped the shark? It's a colloquialism in entertainment. Oh. It means, it means you've gone too far. It means you've done a five-part tell-all and you, you've lost people. It comes from, I believe it comes from... Happy Days. You know the show Happy Days? No. You know the Fonz? No. <laughs> you know the Henry Winkler? You know the Fonz. Henry Winkler. Happy Days. The guy days. that has something to do with the expensive whiskey? Huh? No. What whiskey? Poppy? Oh, Pappy Van Winkle? Yeah. Where? Where's the connection? Henry Winkler, the Fonz? The Winkler? Oh. Winkle. Uh, oh, Winkle. No, my aunt dated the Fonz. I've told you that before. I, I could swear you know no. who I'm talking about. Anyways, he was on a very popular show back in the day called Happy Days. And in one episode, I'm pretty sure this is where it comes from. In one episode, in one episode he was on a jet ski and he jumped over a shark. Oh. <laughs> and everyone was like, well, this show is ridiculous. Now this, I can't watch. So then when a show loses it, it's called Jumping the Shark. Oh, interesting. Anyways, I thought when we were going through this that, all right, now we're not even looking for real love. We're just looking for shock factor, people on TV to draw on viewership, but we've abandoned K-1s and 90 Day and international relationships, and we're just trying to get people to tune in. And then I watched this episode, and Therese is right. These people are crazy. But the stories seem very good. I'm very intrigued. Oh, me too. And I love how inclusive TLC became because it's not just older white woman with a younger guy from else, elsewhere, right? Yeah. Now it became more. And then we include people from all kinds of backgrounds with disabilities or people who are transgender. Like, I love to see that because, yes, these people also have stories to tell. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I'm glad we are telling these stories because not just because of the inclusivity factor. That's amazing. But because they seem like they have stories to tell. Oh, yeah. Totally. And, and so I'm excited about that. And this season couldn't have come a minute too soon because, I don't know, maybe I'm alone on an island. But I was getting a little tired of Happily Ever After. I think the five-part tell-all, I think four parts would have been good. I think they should have cut the fifth part. I think two parts would have been good. (laughs) I think two parts would have been fair. I think we all would have said, that was fulfilling. Two parts, because you forget. It's not just five parts. It's five two-hour parts. (laughs) Listen, I still liked it. I liked the house. If it was just the tell-all, sure. But it was the house. It was more. All right. I'll give you that. So very excited to talk about this new season. Before we do real quick, a little business. We're still talking about The Other Way on Patreon and Supercast. We, yes, we're very excited about this new season, but we can't forget about The Other Way. No. There's some wild things happening over there, too. Wild. And we're talking about it every week on Patreon and Supercast. If you want to join us over there, patreon.com slash married to reality, married to reality at supercast.com. You can get in for that other way content at the Cousins Club level. Yes. If you want video of us doing the pod, that's the family affair level, plus a monthly bonus. 
we throw that at you at the family affair level once a month, maybe twice a month, maybe who knows once in a while we throw in random bonuses for everyone. We like to keep it interesting like that. Last month we did perfect wife. Yes. We did perfect wife. It was a mini series on Hulu about the mysterious disappearance of Sherry Papini. Sherry, Sherry Papini. Uh, Karen Filippelli. Yeah, we tried to do a little mystery, but obviously. Well, don't spoil it. Yeah, I was just going to. Don't spoil it. I don't want to spoil it, but it was good. We yeah. enjoyed it because as much as we love re- reality TV, we also enjoy the occasional mystery. The occasional. Am I right? The occasional. Yeah. All right. So that's on Patreon and Supercast. Check it out. Also, make sure you're following us on Instagram at Married to Reality Pod. Main thing we're doing over there is chatting with you. We, we try to, we definitely keep you updated and scheduling and all that on Instagram. We try to have some fun over there, but we love chatting with you. Yes. So message us, call in, follow along at Married to Reality Pod on Instagram. Also, make sure you're following us wherever you're listening right now. It's so easy to do. Look down, smash that follow button. Guys, smash it like it's as hot as the new season and all these couples. Because, so guys, I, I'm, I'm in love. So hot. I'm in love and we just have episode one. And I, my jaw hit the floor with some of these people. Oh, yeah. And it was just introductions. Oh, yeah. So smash it like it's as hot as this new season. And last but not least, if you haven't left a review, please do. You guys know we're suckers for a little love. And if you leave a five-star review, we will read it on this podcast right here. Do you have one to kick us off for a new season? I sure do. Let's hear it. I sure do. Got a new one from our friend Zombie Chick. Oh, hello, Zombie Chick. All right, five stars. Love it. Titled, Best Podcast Ever. Ooh. All right. I don't know if my mom changed her handle to Zombie Chick, (laughs) but Best Podcast Ever. Zombie Chick writes, guys, longtime listener for now she's sounding like Teresa. Guys, <laughs> guys, longtime listener, first time caller. When you said you have a shared notes list with karaoke songs, my heart just <laughs> melted. Yeah, we should read you a couple of those tunes. Your energy with each other is hilarious, and y'all have the greatest perspective on the insanity that is reality TV. Keep up the good work. I love that. And I do love zombie movies, too. And you know what I'm going to add to the karaoke list? Zombie. 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 I love it. That's on my most played songs on Spotify. Cranberries. In honor of Zombie Chick, I think we should add that to the shared karaoke songs. But yeah, thank you for the review. That was a beautiful review. You kicked off the new season with this awesome review. So thank you, Zombie Chick. And yeah, we definitely... Guys, not, not only... And we have a shared karaoke list. We also have a karaoke machine with two microphones. Of course. And that's just <laughs> table stakes for us. And we have matching outfits that we put on and we perform. Now you've said too much. <laughs> <laughs> All we, right. should, we should take the outfits out. It's been a while. <laughs> right. That is the business. Before we get into this brand new season, and I don't want to delay it too long because I don't want that new season smell to wear off. But before we get into it, what do you say we do a little 90 day by the way? Let's hear it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, by the way, number one, apparently Bilal and Shida are quite the YouTubers. Oh. I had no idea they even had a channel, but a lot of people did. A lot of people are watching it. They recently celebrated a huge YouTube milestone. Oh, really? 100,000 subscribers. Oh, wow. They earned that silver plaque that so many YouTubers what? have fallen over. What do they do on YouTube? I'm glad you asked. So currently they have around 114,000 subscribers on their channel. Oh, wow. The videos, the views on the videos range, big range, from like a few thousand views. Like some videos have 2,000, 3,000 views. Some have a couple hundred thousand views. Wow. So- it's a bit of a potpourri of content. It's all over the place. Not in a bad way, but there's just seemingly no central theme. They kind of just, whatever tickles their fancy, they do a video on. Okay. So everything from travel hacks, which I think I think was a sponsored video from a luggage brand mm. that didn't have the most views, to their pregnancy journey, which, oh, yeah. by the way, congrats to them. They recently announced they're pregnant, but it's all, it's all over the place in content. 
but people seem to love it. They've got over 100,000 subscribers. Wow. So if you're interested in following them or seeing what they've been up to lately, you can just search Bilal and Shida on YouTube and give it a give it a look, give it a follow. Nice. I mean, good for them. Yeah. All right. By the way, number two. Let's hear it. Keeping with the entertainment theme. Okay. From the small screen, from the laptop screen, to maybe a bigger screen. Oh. Huh. The onion that is Michael. 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 Keeps peeling. Turns out he's an actor. What? Nah, I use that term loosely. I'm being generous <laughs> with the term actor. Some internet sleuths recently discovered his IMDb page, which states he acted in a 2023 film, Brothers in Arms. Is it an American film? No, I think it's I think it's out of Nigeria. Okay. He played the part of Michael, but <laughs> I don't think I don't think it's biographical. I don't I just think it's sort of like on The Office, Angela was Angela. I think yeah, they, so like there is no an abusive older woman <laughs> in the movie. Not that I saw. So the log line on IMDb states what this Brothers in Arms is all about. It says, former soldiers Addie and Tosin are inseparable friends. But when Addie is accused of killing Tosin's sister, their unbreakable bond hangs in the balance. Wasn't Addie one of the goofballs? I don't remember the names because just remember the goofballs. I'm pretty sure there was a goofball named Addy. And so it just seems like his friends made a movie. Yeah. Because a person, Addy, is listed as the producer. Ooh. So it seems like him and his buddies got together and shot a film. Maybe they thought we're going to use your fame to huh. launch this thing. But that's all I could find. If anyone can has a link to this movie or <laughs> anything... Um, Interesting. Send it my way. I would love to see Michael in action. Me too, because he doesn't strike me as an actor. He's too honest. Like he he can put up a face. Yeah. He's yeah. just Michael. It's Michael. Anyways, all right. That is 90 Day, by the way. Nice. Enough is enough. Let's let's dive in. Without further ado, let's do it. The the reason we're here, Sunday night. 90 Day Fiance, before the 90 Days, Season 7, Episode 1. Yes. Shall we start? They're all new couples, so that's exciting to say the least. Let's start with the first couple we met on this episode. Renee from New Mexico and Chidi from Nigeria. Yeah, so Renee's 37, New Mexico, Chidi, 33. I love you, chicken. <laughs> it's a different show. <laughs> it's all the same. It's uh, the ninth day universe. So we get to meet Renee first. Oh, Renee, yes. as John eluded, lost chickens. 130 chickens. Five dogs, three cats, and a horse, but the chickens are the best, apparently. You missed the five dogs also. I just said that. Oh, then you missed the five ducks. <laughs> oh, there were ducks? Of course there's ducks. Oh, I said 130 chickens, five dogs, three cats, and a horse. They're ducks? And a partridge in a pear tree. Uh, I have 130 chickens, five <laughs> ducks, five dogs, three <laughs> cats, and a horse. Miss the ducks. Going back to my intro, these people are crazy. <laughs> um, yeah, you got to have you gotta have a duck for every dog. You, you know that. Oh, inst- yeah. <laughs> you know that Instagram. That Instagram, guys, it's like a... What's the, what's the handle? I don't know. Duck and a dog, probably. No, it's something like, I don't know. But it's a it's a beautiful friendship between a golden retriever and a bunch of ducks. Yeah. So I think that's what's going on here. Oh, <laughs> not, to, not to mention, she also has two children. Yes. But it's really more about the chickens. She has an eight-year-old son, Devin, and a 16-year-old daughter, Lexi. Yes. She's been married. Oh, I'm sorry, never no, been married. Never been married. But has two different fathers for these children. Yeah, and it seemed like that these kids just came out of hookups or bad relationships because she said, I've never been married, never really been in love, never been passionately kissed. Oh, that's sad. Yeah, she describes herself as a quirky weirdo loner. Mm-hmm. That's and also how I describe her. Yeah, because, ooh... At this point, it wasn't hitting me, but it's going to hit me in a little bit. Yeah. I mean, she might be the the one furthest off, just her rocker. 
out of everyone we've met so far. Yeah. She's just <laughs> cuckoo. Yeah. So, okay. Yes. Never been kissed, at least passionately. Uh, never said or heard the words, I love you. But five years ago, the man of her dreams fell into her lap. Yes, she met Chidi online and they this, connected spiritually. This, well, they connected on Facebook, it seems like. But <laughs> this is a head scratcher because she said he was a friend suggestion. So she went for it. But I don't know. I, I don't really spend much time on Facebook, but I feel like all friend suggestions have some relation to you or your family or someone else you know. It can be a location related to, but yeah. These two seem to have nothing in common unless he's on like a I Love Chicken website True. or I don't know. True. So, okay. She went for it. She said, all right, uh, it seems like a good suggestion. Let me, let me friend this person. And they started a little online relationship. Yes. And within two weeks, Renee said, I love you. And Chidi said it back. Yeah, so they've been talking for a while and she sent him a couple of spicy pictures that he never really said anything about, but he kept talking to her and being very nice and very sweet and very polite. This always makes me question, scratch my head, ponder. The woman who has never been in love i guess maybe as i'm talking about it it's it's making more sense in my head the fact that like she's never been really in a relationship never been in love never married right but she's sending booty pics i'm just kind of like where do you how do you make that jump from having 130 chickens to sending your booty to a stranger (laughs) on the internet but i guess that makes total sense that's why you're not finding love and that's why you're not settling down because you're just out there sending booty pics or maybe she just felt comfortable with him and decided sure. to send a booty pic. I don't know. Sure. But her attempt on sending cute pictures had no res- response from yeah. him. And so she kind of called him out on it. Like, hey, like I've been sending you all these photos and you said nothing. So Chitty comes clean and he shares with her that he's blind. Mm-hmm. And... That didn't, it almost something switched with her that she started loving him even more for this. Yeah. And this I I find compelling because she's always had some issues with self-confidence, right? And maybe didn't love the way she looked, didn't feel comfortable in her own skin. But now she's got this man who she loved regardless before. Yeah. But now finds out, oh, he really can't see me. He can't judge me. And so my insecurities aren't going to play as big of a part in this relationship as they have in the past. I could dance around naked. Yeah. Apparently it seems like she conceived her children in the dark with a shirt on. That seems to be her move. Yeah. So now she's like, I don't even have to have a shirt on. Right. Can be totally naked. Right. So, hey, that's going to work out for them potentially. We potentially. Meet, potentially. We meet Chidi, 33, living in Lagos. And Isn't yes. this where Michael lives? I believe so. Yeah. Yeah, maybe Chidi was in the movie. Um, <laughs> and as you said, he's blind. But that doesn't stop him from, from playing football, soccer. Yeah, football. If you will. And I found this super fascinating. So he's in a league with other visually impaired players. And they use the special ball. That has a unique sound to help know where it is. Mm-hmm. I find that very fascinating. And to keep things fair, because everyone has a different level of sight, they wear an eye mask, right? Because everyone can see a little bit differently. Yeah. So I find that very fascinating. Then we learn Chidi wasn't born blind. No, and I can't, you need to talk about this because I get very sensitive about talking about eyes. Like, I literally get nauseous when someone says something happened to their eyes. Like, my body reacts to that. I so. can't believe you can put contacts in. Yeah, that's the biggest, that's the wildest thing I do. <laughs> because really I is. I can't, I 
I literally, I'm not even joking. I get physically nauseous hearing that something happened to someone's <laughs> eye. Guys. I threw up once. Oh, I know in class. Right? Yeah. Because when a Visine commercial comes on, you don't want to be next to <laughs> Teresa. <laughs> So, I just, I can't even, oh, you just say it. Let me, let me tell you about it. So when Chidi was 17, his friend, Teresa looks very uncomfortable right now. Uh, his friend was climbing a tree and an apple hit his eye. Okay. He went blind over time. It wasn't just that one, I guess maybe it was the one hit, but it took time to degrade. And one night... Because he couldn't see well because of the apple incident, he ended up hitting his other eye. Ugh. Yeah. So he eventually became blind in both eyes, which is really a sad story. Um, oh, very sad. Okay, let's move on. And, and they say, as you can imagine, living visually impaired in Lagos is not the easiest because it is super congested. There's no ramps, stairs everywhere. and Traffic everywhere. Traffic. People, cars. It's- yeah. They just kind of showed if Angela, you, uh, Hurricane well, Angela coming through the streets. Exactly. They just saw him kind of navigating around in between all this chaos and oof. So Chidi needs some assistance. Who does he turn to? The big man upstairs. The big J. Big G. God. The big J. Yeah. Jesus. Oh. God. Yeah, you choose. <laughs> um, so Chidi's a Christian, prays day and night. And feels that Renee is a bit of a blessing to him. Yeah, blessing from the skies, which that's the only thing that Renee would agree with because she has a she praises a different God, if you may. I may. <laughs> let's let's learn about that because cut to a new day. Renee is on her way to her mom's storage unit. Like, is her mom running the storage wars? Like, her mom looks like a the storage boss. I, I don't know what's going on, but it <laughs> makes me think she, they've got a lot of money because it seems like they're landowners, property owners. Well, they, I think mom does. I don't think, I think Grené might struggle a little bit because it seems like her job is to sell eggs from the 5,900 chickens. True. And then she cleans the storage True. that her mom owns. So I think her mom has money or makes money and Renee's trying her best. It's kind of like Tata and the banana chips. Yeah. It's like, yeah, Renee's mom's got the White House. Yeah. And going to be stingy with the cash for the kids. Well, that's what it looks like. But... I almost picture mom as like, okay, she sits there as the boss of this, this storage storage wars unit. And we had two friends. They're very True. judgmental. True. They're just like chilling, probably drinking tea with vodka or something. Just like mm-hmm. living their best lives. And Renee Olsen, and she knows these friends because she grew up around them. Yeah. Mom's besties. Yeah, Renee needs to make some extra cash or she's going there to clean a unit. And... Debbie and Jeanette, these are the friends, think Renee's got a couple screws loose. Yes. Because of, not because of the chickens or the duck dog ratio, but <laughs> but because she's going to go to Africa to meet Chidi, who they know is blind. And they're confused, like, wait, so you're just attracted to him because he's blind? And she said, no, like she was never looking for a blind man, but she feels more comfortable with it because she's very self-conscious. That, that's still not the craziest thing. So they brought up another good point. He is an extreme Christian. He loves the big J or the big G, your call. Renee does not. Renee does, is not religious. She does not follow the Bible. She does not pray or go to the church. But she knows some things that apparently we don't, or I do. She did might not know. UFO exists and it changes everything. Not just UFOs, but aliens and Illuminati. Yeah. She, she knows for a fact. I mean, she lives in New Mexico. Fuck, that's the land because it is nothing. That's not the land of Illuminati, though. What's Illuminati? Ah, I don't even want to talk about it. We'll, we'll get canceled. Really? Well, no, it's just like this high-powered secret group that controls everything. Oh. 
That's what she believes in? Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. Well, she says that, yeah, Chiri Prais believes in the big J for now because she's going to woke him and he's going to be as woke as she is once she's done with him and tells him about all these UFOs and these <sighs> Illuminati people. Yeah. That's it's getting more interesting by the minute with Renee. Very interesting. I think that's the main reason why this woman's probably single. That's very true. Yeah. That's very true. Um, so then we go back to see Chidi. He's praying. He's at home. He lives with his sister and her husband. Yes. Who who help him out, kind of take care of him. They give him a place to live, cook for him. And this is also where Renee's going to stay yes. when she comes. So we learn a little bit more that Chidi made a vow to never have sex again unless he's married. Yes. And that's something Renee doesn't know about because, oh, Renee, Renee can't wait to get physical. Oh, hello. Um, he also didn't tell her she's going to have her own bedroom. So a couple surprises for our friend Renee. And Chidi's sister wants to know, are you planning to propose mm-hmm. when she arrives? And he says, well... Got to find some things out about her character before I propose. Because apparently she's got a temper and she just says whatever comes to her mind. And this is not something that Chidi can deal with. So he's hoping we can talk through it. Then we can get married. Then we can bang. It's kind of shitty on his part because she's coming to Nigeria thinking that they're going to be together physically in person. And he has all these concerns. Yeah. I think he should share the concerns before she comes. Yeah. I, I never like when someone's going to do such a big thing as pack up their life and move to another country and their secrets still untold. Yeah. Let somebody know fully what they're getting themselves into. For sure. It's pretty selfish to be like, all right, I know you moved here. Now I'm going to tell you the truth. Yeah. But- they both kind of are harboring secrets. She's kind of got this secret of I'm going to convert him to my beliefs, aliens, Illuminati. Yeah. And he's holding on to his secrets. So what's fair is fair. Let's see. It's going to be fun. Yeah. What do you say we take a quick break right here? Let's do it. Okay. Because we've got a lot, Oof. a lot to unfold over here. So take a quick break. We will tell you about our sponsors for this episode and we'll come back and head to Nevada. All right. Yes. We'll be back in a second. Hey, ladies, let's talk about something we all go through. Hormonal changes. Whether it's the time of the month, menopause or perimenopause, finding balance can feel like an uphill battle. But I've got something that might just make your life easier. Hormone harmony. Hormone Harmony isn't just another supplement. It's a comprehensive solution that's making waves for a reason. Women everywhere are experiencing the difference, and it's not hard to see why. If you're dealing with mood swings, sleepless nights, or even those dreaded hot flashes, Hormone Harmony is here to support you. It's packed with adaptogens, those incredible herbal extracts that help your body adjust to stress, especially the kind that comes with hormonal shifts. Imagine going through your day without that cloud of discomfort hanging over you. Whether it's pre-period tension or the challenges of menopause, Hormone Harmony has your back. And let's talk quality for a second. The folks at Happy Mammoth, the brains behind Hormone Harmony, are all about delivering top-notch science-backed ingredients. They don't cut corners. It's no wonder a bottle of Hormone Harmony sells every 24 seconds. But here's the best part. Right now, you can get 15% of your first order at happymammoth.com. Just use the code MARRIED at checkout. That's happymammoth.com with the code MARRIED for 15% off. We'll put a link in the show notes for you too. But one more time, head to happymammoth.com and enter M-A-R-R-I-E-D, that's MARRIED, at checkout for 15% off your first order and start feeling like yourself again today. And we're back. Hello, Jonathan. Hello, Teresa. This next couple is, wow. I've learned some things, actually. Okay. I've learned a new term. 
Should we introduce this couple first? Yes, do it. We're talking about Lauren, 33, from Nevada, and Faith, 31, from the Philippines. Yeah. Let me just put a disclaimer out there because we're throwing out the ages. So before this episode hit our screens, I went and I found an article with the names and the locations and the ages of all these couples just because when we're watching it live and we're trying to take notes, if you miss the age or something, like it's it's hard to catch yeah. up on. So. I just put it all in my document ahead of time. And then as we were meeting the couples in real time, some of the ages were different. So I don't know if this article was written later and Mm. they were a year older or something, but just a little caveat if our ages are off a year. Yeah, that's a good point. All right. We meet Lauren first. He lives in Las Vegas. He's working as a drag queen assistant. Love this for Lauren. Yes. And his job is to collect money people <laughs> throw at them, help the girls put, buy drinks, put the wigs on. And he loves his job. He I, loves it. I love this so much. I love how serious he takes it. Because, again, one of the main aspects of his job, it'd probably be the first bullet point on the LinkedIn job description (laughs) is collecting the money for the drag queens so he's in my mind he's scrounging around on the floor on the stage just picking up the money putting it into a pillowcase like it's halloween he's wearing a shirt and tie i was just gonna say that and all the girls were saying yeah look at him he's always so serious but we love him he loves us i love that because i don't think i would have that work ethic if i took this job i'd probably be in shorts and a t-shirt, knowing I'm going to be on the ground crawling around getting singles. Probably. He, this, this man is dressed to the nines. He takes it very seriously. And as, as he was talking through this, I was like, okay, so you do this job and you absolutely love it, which I find that interesting because a lot of people might do this job. It's like, all right, I need a job. I'll do, you know, all the jobs. I'll do anything. Yeah. And he loves it. And I was thinking... What's his background that this man really loves this very interesting job? Well, we learn. He grew up in Washington State and it was difficult because... The countryside of Washington yeah, State, yeah. He never blended in there. All these guys were these like macho, big guys. And he was the weird kid that he was told many times he's gay. He's not gay, but he ident- identifies as gynosexual. All right. That's the new word. I didn't know. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't know if I've ever heard that word before. So he said he finds femininity attractive. Attractive, and I assume with both guys and girls, maybe. I yes, I can totally wrap my head around this term. Now I don't know. I should have looked it up. I don't know if this is like a common term, but I totally get it. Where he's saying, "Yeah, I'm attracted to." Femininity. It doesn't matter if it was femininity from a person who was born as a female or not. It's just yeah. Like that, which totally makes sense. And so this makes even more sense because he prefers dating trans women with or without penis, preferably with penis because it's fun to play with. All right. That's where you lost me a little bit there, but <laughs> <laughs> you do you. Uh, so he, he, he basically sums it up saying, I prefer the women penis because it's softer or whatever he, he added. Yeah. All right. So we see Lauren with his friend Esther at a sex shop. They used to be boyfriend and girlfriend, but it didn't work out because Esther didn't have anything fun to play with. Yes. And he says he... Once he started dating trans women, it hit him. He realized that that's what he needs in his life. Lauren, try a, a set of boobs. Boobs are fun to play with too. But they, they, I think he likes that too. Oh. He likes dating trans women. I think tra- a lot of trans women have boobs. Yeah. But some some keep the so penis, he, so some he's, don't. So he's okay. He's trying to have his cake and eat it too, where he's saying, I want to play with the boobs, but I also want to play with the penis. Yeah. I get most of the penis. I get it. I've only got two hands, so I am (laughs) satisfied with a nice set. But all right, I understand. Yes. So, yeah, they're at the sex shop. He's getting a gift for a special someone. And here, here is when it gets even more interesting. So he's, as you said, with his friend who he used to date, who he actually lives with because he's technically homeless. 
Mm. So homeless that he doesn't really have any money saved. So his ex, who he lives with, is buying this gift for his new special someone. All right. That's a, it's just a good friend. <laughs> it's a good friend and someone who doesn't want to live with Lauren anymore. It's like, here you go. I'll help you fly this nest. I think she still loves Lauren. Sure. Yeah. But maybe as a friend, not a roommate. Maybe. Well, we learned more. So two months ago, he downloaded two Filipino apps, and that's how he met the special someone, Fate. Yes. Fate is a trans woman, so yes. right up his alley. And now, after four months of talking, he's willing to spend his entire savings, like literally everything he has, to go to the Philippines. Yes. But... This isn't just a trip he can wake up one day and make. He needs to prep for this trip. Like, he's training for the Olympics 2024 Philippines. Yeah, so th this, th this just this keeps getting wilder <laughs> and wilder. And this before, makes... we, before we get into that, I was just going to add, he also has two other minimum wage jobs that he's trying to just get any money he can before he embarks on this trip. Yeah, he works at a gift shop. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So his training for this trip includes prepping for heat and humidity. I've never been to the Philippines, but apparently it's very hot and humid. So you don't want to just show up unprepared. It's like climbing Everest. You need to do altitude training. Okay. <laughs> So what better way to prep for the heat and the humidity? If you don't have money, you can't just buy a plane ticket and stay in Florida for a week to prep. <laughs> okay. You get some shrimp, you get some sweet chili sauce, you grab some soy sauce, and you prep it in the bathroom to really get Ugh. that steam going. Yeah, the Filipino heat, the flavor. And while he's cooking this shrimp sauce, he was just some odd workout yeah. in that heat, in that bathroom. And when he's done, he eats uh, he prepared over uh, the toilet. This, you have a thing with eyes? I almost had to turn this off. Yeah. Uh, this got my stomach turning. Yeah, he said, oh, I mean, it's not terrible. Imagine what that bathroom smells like. Oh, I found His a sweat. friend who owned the house. I would be like, bro, you, you are out. Yeah. Yeah. So... Later that day, then we see Lauren at work. He's helping his boss, Derek. They're preparing some costumes for the upcoming drag show. Since he's not going to be able to be there, he's kind of helping in advance. And in the middle of that, he calls Faith. And it's hard for them to find time to talk because of the time difference. 15 hours. 15 hours. But they, they get on the horn. And first question are we still sleeping in separate rooms when we get to the hotel? Yes. Faith wants separate rooms. To me, all right, I can understand it from an early relationship point of view. Well, it's because Faye has never had a boyfriend. Okay. So this is new for her. But doesn't sound economical for a guy who's not working. Well, I don't think he's paying for a hotel. True. This guy is so broke. True. And I also don't think Faith knows exactly the, the money situation. How broke he is. That yeah. he's in. Yeah. So Faith wants to take things slowly. So that's part of this two room situation. But Lauren is super sexual. <laughs> and he sent some sexy photos in the past. But we learn there's some jealousy issues, too, with Faith. Yes, and rightfully so without her even knowing. So apparently they, they are not exclusive, but Faith doesn't know, right? He is seeing other people. This is ridiculous. But she's not. She believes in monogamy, but Lauren doesn't. He doesn't believe in monogamy. He loves seeing other people and he wants to continue seeing other people while in the Philippines. This he doesn't ridiculous. just want to stick to one person. This is, this is wild. Um, again, this is something you tell your partner before you head that way. Yeah. Lauren's, Lauren's reasoning is you can have sex with your partner for love, but then you can have sex with someone else 
just for fun, like an educational experience, maybe you'll learn something. Bring it back to your relationship. Oh, Lauren. Everybody wins. Oh, Lauren. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Just when you think like, oh, 150 chickens. Oh. This can't get wilder. We have Lauren. <laughs> yeah. Who's sweating to shrimp and keeping secrets like this. So let me see him packing his one backpack. This bro doesn't even have a carry-on. Well, he's never traveled before. He's never been at the airport before. And so I don't think he has a suitcase. I don't think he knows that he needs to bring a change of clothes, maybe. So he's just going to wear his shrimp-steamed clothes <laughs> the entire trip. Yeah, and he's talking about it. He's going to give Faith a girlfriend test. This is just ridiculous. He calls it philosophical. What? Excuse me? Philosophical. <laughs> Wrong thinking. Philosophical. <laughs> I think you're closer. Philosophical? I'm even closer. You say that. I don't know what you're trying to say. That he calls the test ridiculous and philosophical. <laughs> you say it. It sounds like you're talking about an eyeglass shop uh, owned by a guy named Phil. It sounds like you're like, Phil's optical. <laughs> no. Philosophical. Philo- you say philosophical? <laughs> yeah. Like it's like a it's like a f- Oh, I know what philosophical is, Teresa. <laughs> you just weren't saying it. I was philosophical, you say. <laughs> Philos- you- yes, philosophical. But in the beginning you were saying Phil's optical. No, I wasn't. All right. You were saying it. Well, we'll play it back. <laughs> so, okay, yes, he made up this test a few years ago. With questions like, can snakes be found on every continent? <laughs> Which I don't know. <laughs> I would guess maybe not Antarctica. So but, no. But who knows? Uh, would a bubble pop in space if you blew on it? Another good question. He doesn't even know the answers. Have you ever been tempted to sleep inside the fridge? Uh, that is what a serial killer asks you. Well, that's because he... Probably lives in a place with no AC, so he wishes. Well, he was probably wishing that when he was steaming his shrimp Ooh. in the shower. Uh, and so, okay, he's also got one more thing he needs to pack. The ring for the proposal. And the only ring he could afford. Yeah. And this always breaks my heart a little bit. You don't need a ring at this point. You've never met this person. Who knows how it's going to go. So why spend your last 50 bucks on a ring at the off chance that this is actually going to work. Like if you're doing well, if you're well off, sure, you can drop a little cash on a ring, but you're living penny to penny. Save your money. Well, his idea is to stay in the Philippines and not come back because he thinks living in the Philippines will be cheaper and easier than in the U S true. Well, Let's so see. he's kind of like Statler. He's on a mission. He's on a mission. Yeah. All right. That is Lauren. Next. Whew. The opposite of Lauren when it comes to money. Exactly. Tiger Lily. Tiger 41 Lily. from Texas. Texas. Texas Tigers. And Adnan 22 from Jordan. And this is going to be like a new spin on Married at First Sight. Why? Because the plan is like as soon as oh, they yeah. see each other. They're going to get married. Yeah. So Tiger Lily, besides that fancy name, she loves to live fancy. Mm. She loves to live a luxurious lifestyle. Sunnies, shoes, cars. And we see her watch shopping and she's like, I just want something, something unique. And this guy whips out this watch. Only hundreds of them in the world. 26K. She's like, um, okay, pack it up. Here's why I couldn't be friends with Tiger Lily. I love a luxe life. I don't I don't feel any sort of way about someone who lives a luxe life, but own it and just be like, yeah, I like nice stuff. I can afford it, so I'm going to buy it. She says, oh, well, you know, I, I like to buy fancy things, but it's all about health, like fancy sunglasses to protect my eyes and fancy cars to protect my whole body. I think your A-Benz can also protect your eyes. Yeah, just own it. Just be like, you know what I want? I can afford a $26,000 watch. I'm going to... Buy a twenty six thousand dollar watch. Don't yeah. be like, well, it's for my health. Yeah. So we learn more about Tiger Lily. So she got pregnant at thirty and got married. Yes. She lived in a fancy house surrounded by fancy things. Her husband was very rich, 
but he was also very controlling with cameras everywhere. Yeah, this is this is a little yeah. suspicious. So she stayed in the relationship for the kids. But then I guess when the kids get a little older, she just decided like this is it. So she filed for a divorce that took four years. Mm-hmm. I'm sure the husband was fighting tooth uh, and nail oh, yeah. for every penny. Didn't want to give her any money because <laughs> look how she's spending it. Yeah. But she says now her and her kids are very well taken uh, care of. Yeah. I, I wonder how rich she She must be so loaded. It seems like it if you're dropping that kind of money on a watch. And then we'll learn later, but all her friends are people who work for her. Oh, yeah. She pays for her friends. Yeah. Like, she must be so loaded. Yeah. Little Chantelle. Remember when Chantelle went to Greece and the only people she brought with her were like yeah. her tour instructor? And yeah, her- but Chantelle is not this rich because Pedro. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, she said she never wants to get married again until she met Adnan. And now a model from Jordan, and now she's doing the opposite. She's going to marry him on the day she meets him. Yeah. So we see them FaceTiming, and Tiger Lily has Adnan write on a piece of paper because apparently she's a handwriting expert. (laughs) You can tell if someone's a serial killer or if they're just good in bed based on their handwriting. And what is... What does she learn about Adnan? He is very optimistic, has high self-esteem, but she can't tell how he is in the bedroom because his why was in cursive. <laughs> All right, that, that checks out. So well, we'll find out. In a week, yeah, in a week she'll go find out in person because that's when she's leaving for Jordan to meet yeah. him. Yeah, but before person. she goes, she's going to see her life coach, Steph, who was there helping her navigate throughout the divorce. Yeah. And so she's telling her about Adnan and how they met and how she's going to marry him. And this coach is like, why? Why are you going to marry him on the first date? And what about your money? Are you going to protect your money, your kids? And here comes Tiger Lily and and her naiveness saying, I don't need to. I mean, he's not marrying me for the money. Yeah. I mean, he may not be. There's other prizes. I wonder if he knows that she's so loaded. I'm sure she's sending gifts. Mm. But no, first step's like, why are you doing this? And Tiger Lily's like, why not? Right? Trying to skirt the answer because the real reason is they need to get married or they can't even hug. They can't kiss. They can't be in the same room alone. So Steph obviously is very suspicious of this thinking, okay, maybe she is being used for her money. I'm suspicious that this is going to work because, all right, Tiger Lily, we learned she was in this controlling relationship. There were security cameras. Now she thinks I'm in the opposite relationship. I'm free. I'm independent. I'm in charge. But that's because you're in a long distance relationship right now. Yes. Plus, we see it often on 90 Day, almost all the time. The Muslim men live within their culture, and the culture for them is that they are in charge. Yeah. They do control their women, right? They, I don't know if she's aware of it, but he, he is going to control her because that's what he knows. That's part of his religion. Yeah, and I think she feels the sense of freedom now because, again, they are thousands of miles yeah. apart. But as soon as they're together, I think it's going to feel differently. And... Her friends, she goes and meets up with her friends for a little going away celebration. Her life coach, her lash girl, her injector, they're all there. Um, Two of her service providers are actually going with her to keep her looking her best Mm -hmm. on this trip. And the friends are like, well, he's he follows a strict religion. Has he been controlling? And yes, which is not a surprise, as you said, Therese, we've seen it time and time again, Eve, Muhammad, right? Like, please don't wear revealing clothing. Yeah. And that's what has been asked of Tiger Lily here. Yes, but she says she's okay with it. They are actually going to have a 200 plus people wedding that he is planning without her input. So she 
I almost feel like she's looking at it like maybe he is loaded too. Ah. Maybe he doesn't need my money. Maybe he really is doing it for love. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I mean, it, this sounds better than uh, Nicole and Mahmoud who got married at someone else's wedding. Why am I blanking on that? Remember they got married, but there was another wedding celebration they kind of crushed? Maybe. Yeah. I'll Maybe. remind you. All right. Um, so, Tiger Lily. There we go. Well, it'll be interesting to see her in Jordan. Last but not least. Brian, 51 from Illinois, and Ingrid, 32 from Brazil. Give me more, Brian. This is a- I need to get to the bottom of this. Please send spoilers. Like, the way this ended, I was like, I need to know. We will. I know we will. So, we meet Brian, Uber Brian. He's been working as a rideshare driver for the last seven years. Loving it. Um, Cruising around in his Audi. Yeah. And he's loving it. And it makes sense because he says, it's hard for people like me to socialize I love talking to people. I love getting to know people. And the reason why is because he's in a wheelchair. Yes, he parked his car after one of his fares and takes out his wheelchair. And we're like, oh, okay. He's he's in a wheelchair. He's approaching his 25th anniversary of being in a wheelchair. Yes. And we get the backstory. When he was 27, he was shot with a handgun. The bullet hit his spinal cord Mm -hmm. and left him a quadriplegic. Yes. So he is from the inner city of Chicago where gun violence is just not uncommon, unfortunately. And he said he got carjacked by two guys. And because he just didn't want to let go, Mm -hmm. then this is what happened. And he's been paralyzed from waist down. Yeah. We also learn that... When he was 19, he married his high school sweetheart. They had a daughter, but after three years, they got divorced. Yes. So that's a little bit of the background of Brian, too. Yeah. So then he said once he kind of adjusted to the new lifestyle he had to adjust to, he started playing wheelchair rugby. He actually made the Team USA. Yeah, this is... Wheelchair rugby is nuts. Like... I it played sounds ru- nuts. I played rugby in college, and so I was kind of in, in the rugby world and was exposed to different leagues and whatnot. And it is just, how, do, how you can play a game and not break all of your fingers, I just, in wheelchair rugby, is just beyond me. It's pretty badass. Yeah, but he made the Team USA, so he started playing internationally for four years. He's been to 10 countries, but he fell in love with Brazil. He played there for several years, and he even took a coaching roles. So he stayed there, lived there, learned Portuguese. Yeah. And he found out that it's, for some reason, it was easier to date the women in Brazil because they were more accepting to the, um, the, di- he says the they're disability. More, yeah, they're more yeah. open. Women are more open to, to disability. So he got married, and that failed. But he didn't give up. He almost did. But then he met. Ingrid, 32, single mom. They've been talking for a couple of years. Well, he was married four times. Well, we found that out later. Yeah. But at this point, he was like, yeah, I even got yeah. married. Yeah. Um, yeah. Brian is an onion. And <laughs> uh, he says she's different from the past women I've been with. She's funny. She's kind. She's caring. She's blonde and curvy. Um, so it's time I go meet her in person. Yeah. So Ingrid knows he's in a wheelchair. But she never really asked him about anything, like how it happened, about his everyday life, nothing. Bathroom stuff, sexual stuff. Yeah. Now, I don't think it's on her task. I think he should volunteer that information. Mm, I think she should express a level of interest. A level of curiosity is fine, but I wouldn't be asking about bathroom or even sexual stuff before I've met the person. I guess. I don't know. Because you're chatting online, you're chatting, you're maybe FaceTiming, whatever. I don't know. It seems very personal to ask someone you've never met in person. Well, we see him going to one of his last rugby practices. Yeah. And he's like chatting with his team and everyone's like, hey, bro, are you planning on having sex? <laughs> yeah. What about the blue pill? Are you going to whip out the blue pill? Well, Brian says he he hasn't talked about Viagra yet. 
And the teammates are like, all right, good. First impressions are everything. But we learn he hides Viagra everywhere. He just plants it around his place <laughs> so he can snag it mm. if he needs it, which is good, planning ahead. But we learn ejaculations aren't always the best if you're a quadriplegic because it causes these headaches and can even cause an aneurysm. Yeah, headaches, so, pain. So, yeah, they dangerous. don't usually go all the way. Yeah. And then while he's circled up with his teammates, we, we learn more about Ingrid. She hasn't told her dad about him. Well, her family in general, she said. Yeah, he did specifically say dad, but yeah, family, father. He wonders, is she embarrassed or is she hiding his disability from her mm. friends and family? He doesn't know, but he'll find out. New day, Brian is packing. It's the day he's going to head to Brazil. His daughter's driving him to the airport. And Brian's a bit nervous. And his daughter, Brianna, is like, well, is it because you've done this so many times? <laughs> and we're like, wait, what? what has he done? Yeah, he's been married four times. Three Americans, one Brazilian, had a few failed engagements oh, in boy. Brazil, but thinks Ingrid is different. Yeah, Brianna is asking him, please do not propose this time. Like, just go and meet her without the I hope you don't have a rank dad. And he said, no. No, um, you're safe there. But if things are amazing, I can't promise anything, he says. And then... And here's where I'm like, is it Sunday yet? Although I'm sure they'll tease this out for weeks. At the very end of this segment, he's like, I hope Ingrid is accepting of everything. Not just me being in a wheelchair, but she doesn't know the whole story. There's a lot more to my carjacking story. It wasn't some random event. What? Brian? Tell me more. What happened? Yeah. Tell me more. Very curious. Very curious. I'm so fired up about this season. I know. And we still have four more couples that we haven't been introduced to. Yeah, a couple Floridians, of course. Of course. <laughs> yeah, I'm so into it. I hope you guys are excited about this new season. I can't wait. Uh, seriously, is it Sunday yet? Yeah, it was time for for a fresh season. I know Therese was upset. She could have gone for probably two more parts of a tell -all. No, I told you. I think four was enough. The fifth one was a stretch. Four is the magic. Even no. I admit it. All right, good. We're being honest here. All right. Woo! What an episode. Was it? What a season premiere. Love, Beautiful. Love talking about it. Can't wait to talk more about these couples and the new couples. It's all good stuff. Yeah, I, I, I love podcasting because I love talking about it. And whenever I want to talk about it, before we pod, John always says, save it for the pod. Gotta save it so, for the pod. So this want, was amazing. I want the first time I hear something to be the first time our friends hear something. It's... Keep it fresh, you know? Yeah, you only collect comments from me while we watch, and I just can't stop myself from what do making. You mean? I like, collect comments from you? Collect. Huh? Like for your intros and stuff. I oh. do co I do make comments oh, when we watch. Yeah, yeah. But All I just, right. it's just, it's necessary. All right. Um, I think I. <laughs> I don't We've know. said it all. Yeah, I got a, I got an appointment at Phil's Optical. I got to get to. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. I said philosophical. All right. Um, if you guys want to hear us talk about it the other way, we're doing it on Patreon and Supercast. Patreon.com slash Married to Reality. Married to Reality .com. Check it out. Starting at the Cousins Club level. It's ad free. It is. There's none of the business up front. It's just straight to the, straight to the meat. So check it out. Also, make sure you're following us on Instagram at Married to Reality Pod. You can message us there, call, and let us know. What do you think about this new season? What do you think about these new couples? Are you loving it as much as we are? We want to know. Message us, follow us, at Merit Reality Pod. Also, make sure you're following the podcast wherever you're listening. It's so easy to do. Just look down and smash that follow button. Guys, smash it like it's yes, hot. Here's the beautiful review from our friend. Zombie Chick. Thank you, Zombie Chick. What a beautiful review and an awesome way to kick up the new season. Couldn't agree more. All right, that is it. I have said it all, Teresa. I have said it all. Way too much, actually, yeah, for a cla season premiere. Classic. <laughs> all right. Um, that means we'll talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.